Hey everyone, how you doing? In this video, we're going to be continuing our exploration of how to speed up your code. And in this video, we'll look at how to take advantage of the symmetry of a problem in order to get some kind of speed ups. And the truth is, in this video, we're not going to get the crazy uh, exponential type speed ups we saw in the vectorization video. We're not speeding anything up by a factor of 7,000 or 10,000. It's going to be more moderate speed ups, like a two time speed up or a four time speed up. And that factor really depends on what is the symmetric nature of your problem. So when we work on a lot of real world problems, we find that there's a natural symmetry to them. Um, sometimes that comes in the form of a matrix and certain elements are the same, as we'll see in this example. And there's other types of examples as well. So if you can kind of take advantage and um, foresee that symmetry before you actually go through all the work over and over and over again, you can get a decent amount of speed up. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have some matrix M that we're trying to populate and it's a square matrix. So it's N rows and N columns. And let's say, as we're gonna see in the code in just a minute, that this is a similarity matrix. Now a similarity matrix just gives you each element of it. So the ijth element of it tells you what's the similarity between the ith uh, thing that I care about and the jth thing that I care about. As we'll see in the code, the things we care about are gonna be students at a university and each student has some information about them, such as a GPA, how many units they've taken, uh, what year they're in. And based on these pieces of information, we can say what's the similarity between student I and student J. Now, if you think about it, if I say the similarity between student I and J is 0.3, uh, and then I ask you what's the similarity between student J and student I, you'd probably say you asked me the same question, you just reverse the order of the students. And the answer is yes, that's true. So the similarity should be also 0.3. Um, what I'm trying to get at is it doesn't matter which order you take the students in. So this matrix should be symmetric, which means that the ijth component of the matrix should be the same as the jith entry of the matrix. And so when we're filling up the matrix with these similarity scores, we can take advantage of that symmetry instead of repeating the same work over and over again. So that's enough about the setup of the problem. Let's look at the code. So as we said here, the main feature of this matrix M is that M at IJ is going to be equal to M at JI, okay, for every I and J that are from 1 to N. Now let's look at some naive code where we haven't done the symmetry speed up, we just wrote it naively. So we iterate, we say for I comma S1 in enumerate, and then let's say this L is my list of students or list of whatever I care about. And then this keyword, if you haven't seen it in Python, enumerate, it's really cool. If you put enumerate and you put a list in there, it gives you back each time in the iteration, it gives you back the index of that element and the element itself. So I is the index of a student and S1 is the student itself. So it's a really nice feature. So we say for I comma S1 in enumerate this list of students or whatever, uh, a second for loop because we want to say what's the similarity between every student and every other student. We'll say J comma S2 again in enumerate the same list we're going to calculate the similarity score. This video is not really about how to calculate similarity scores, so just say it's given by some function f. So we put student 1 and student 2 into the function f, and we get the similarity score v. We go ahead and say the matrix at ij, because that's the index of student 1 and index of student 2, is going to be equal to that similarity score. And this is definitely going to work, right? Because we're just going to iterate over every single entry in the matrix, and we're going to say uh, at ij, we're going to put the similarity score. But as we hinted at before, we're doing a lot of extra work because this ij is going to get filled in and then we compute the similarity score for that student S1 and S2. But at some point during this double for loop, we're going to get to the reverse situation where S1 becomes our S2 and S2 becomes our S1. So basically, we're just looking at the uh, students in the reverse order. So then we calculate the similarity score again which is going to give us the same answer, so we just wasted time calculating it again. And we're going to fill in the jth element of the matrix with the same similarity score. So how would we make this faster? How would we make it maybe twice as fast? Because we're doing um, half as much work by not considering the symmetric case each time. Well, there's not a lot of edits to be done. Um, one thing we want to do is the outer for loop will remain the same. We're going to iterate over every single student. But now, instead of iterating over every single other student, we're going to modify this L slightly. We're going to say L only up until the first index. And what does that mean? Well, let's say I'm at some student I. So let's say I'm at student I. 
we're only going to look at all students J, so all indices J, that are going up until the I plus first element. So let's say this is index I plus one. And we're doing that every single time. So what we're doing, you see, is we're just looking at the lower triangle. We're just computing all of the lower triangles. Oops, was my head in the way? Sorry. We're just computing all of the lower triangle of this matrix. So we're saying for any given student I, just compute the similarity score for students that are up and including student I, okay? So up until index I plus one. And then how do we get the upper triangle? You're saying we're only calculating the lower triangle of this matrix. So how do I get at all the elements in the upper triangle? Well, that's going to be using symmetry. So in here, we calculate the similarity score between student S1 and student S2. We update some element in the lower triangle. And then we add another statement where we update the corresponding element in the upper triangle. So we do student IJ and then also student JI entry. So we update that as V as well. And that's going to cut our work about in half. Um, as we'll see, it's not exactly in half because we still have to compute the diagonal. So the diagonal um, kind of breaks the symmetry a little bit. But we'll see that we get almost a double speed up by doing this technique. Okay, so don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So now let's take a code look at how we can use a symmetry speed up to make some code faster in a real world setting. So in this example, we'll be dealing with a student object. So this is a very simple class in Python. Don't worry if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming or classes, it's very easy to understand, especially this little class here. So we have a student class, and the only stuff about a student is their GPA, number of units they have so far, and their year. So that's all you really need to know about that. Let's say we have 2,000 students we're dealing with, and we create a list of 2,000 students. We're just giving each one a random GPA, giving them a random number of units between 0 and 100, and a random year between 1 and 4. Okay. And then we define a similarity score. So given any two students, student one and student two, it's not very important that we understand the exact similarity score, but suffice it to say, it's bounded between zero and one. And the more similar two students are, the closer it's gonna be to one. And the less similar students are, the closer it's gonna be to zero. So that's what the similarity score is. And our goal is, as we saw on the whiteboard, to generate a big similarity matrix. So that's 2000 by 2000 where every single number in that similarity matrix is the similarity score between student I and student J. Now, as we saw on the whiteboard also, this is going to be a symmetric matrix, right? Because if I ask you, what's the similarity score between student uh, 100 and student 200? It's the same thing as a similarity score between student 200 and 100. They should be the same, right? So we can use that symmetry to our advantage to speed up our code by something like a factor of two. We're gonna see it's not exactly, and we'll look at why but something around that factor. So the symmetry speed up is not something crazy. You're not going to get like uh, exponential speed ups or anything like we saw in some of the other videos, but nonetheless, it's something to keep in mind that can make your code run twice as fast, which isn't bad. So let's look at first without symmetry. How would we uh, generate the similarity matrix? We would first initialize the similarity matrix as all zeros. So this is a 2000 by 2000 matrix of all zeros. We loop over every pair of students. So we enumerate the list of students and then enumerate the list of students again in the nested for loop. So given that we have any two students in question, we can get the score by just putting these two students into the similarity function. And then we go ahead and say similarity matrix at index i1, i2 is equal to the score. That's it. And we it'll work, right? Because we're just looping over the entire matrix and putting in all the scores. We get the total time. It took almost 10 seconds. So less something like nine seconds, right? So Notice that we're not taking advantage of symmetry here. Uh, we know that student 100 and 200 will have the same similarity score as student 200 and 100, but we go ahead and compute that score twice anyway. So let's see if we do take symmetry into account, how can we make this a little bit more efficient? We again initialize the matrix to all zeros. This first for loop is the same. We're going to enumerate over all of the students. The second for loop is where things start to change. So we still enumerate I1, S2, but now we're not going over all the students. We're just going up until the index of the current student we're looking at. So if you remember that picture on the whiteboard we drew, it's like we're just going uh, to, uh, up until part of the row. And in, in all, it ends up looking like the triangle that we drew on the whiteboard. We're just iterating over half of the matrix. In fact, here we're just iterating over the uh, lower triangle of the matrix. 
Okay. So uh, given that we do that, we go ahead and get the score for student S1 and S2. We go ahead and update the similarity matrix at I1, I2, as we did before. But we also update the similarity matrix at I2, I1, because we know the score there has to be the same because of symmetry. So we're doing kind of two things at the same time. We're not calculating the score twice. We're just using the score to update two places in the matrix, two symmetric places in the matrix. If we do that, we find the code takes about five seconds. So the question I might be asking is, um, we definitely got four seconds faster, but why is it m not like exactly half, right? Because if it was half of nine, it would be like 4.5, but it's five. So where are those lost 0.5 seconds? So uh, remember, we're not doing exactly half the work. The diagonal still has to be done no matter what. In fact, you know what? You could argue the diagonal doesn't have to be done because the diagonal is just students' uh, similarity scores with themselves, which is obviously going to be one because you can't get more similar than yourself. So we probably could get this down even further. But this is just an explanation about why it's not exactly half because we have to do the diagonal in this case. Last thing, just for sanity, let's check we get the same results. So if I do the similarity matrix from the non-symmetric optimization minus the symmetric optimization, take the absolute values of the differences and take the mean, we find there's absolutely no difference between doing it these two ways. The only difference is that we do it in five seconds versus nine seconds. So again, similarity, uh, our symmetry speedups aren't going to be crazy. They're just going to be as fast as what what's your factor of symmetry, whether it be two or four or eight or whatever, but still something that can give you cut your time down from your program taking 24 hours to 12 hours, which is great. Okay, so until next time.